This year's state of the air report shows the air we're breathing in Sacramento is becoming more harmful to our health. And the researchers behind that report say global warming is playing a major role. We all know the basic costs associated with driving a car. You have to fill it up with gas, change the oil every once in a while. But a new study shows that just driving on Sacramento roads is costing drivers more than $2,000 on average every year. Repelling down the side of a building boosts these kids' confidence. So I decided to give it a try too. Pull the lever. Okay, and just walk. Okay, okay, I'm going, I'm going. I'm still going. And it was quite the experience, but most participants will tell you the best feeling. I'll see you guys at the bottom. I'll co confirm that I made it. And the kids go through a real life fire academy, even getting the opportunity to put out a live fire. Many people who lost their homes in the campfire have moved back onto their properties in RVs while they clean up and rebuild. But after a vote by the Paradise Town Council this morning, many of these people will have to leave their properties again. Taking dancing to new heights, literally. We're here with 2.4 Dance Company, learning all about vertical dance and how it's helping their dancers express themselves in a new way. So here's how it works. You start by putting on this sub pack that allows you to feel motion during the simulation. And once your backpack is secure, you put on the Oculus Rift headset that immerses you in a virtual reality Navy SEAL experience. And the driver can spend up to 120 miles behind the wheel before having to stop to recharge. But this stadium won't just be used for sports. The first major event to be held here will be graduation this June. The kids get hands-on opportunities to learn what their parents do here at Sutter Medical Center. So hands-on they can even hold a cow's heart. Well, today we're giving you a look through the lens of a forensic investigator. The thief got in through this window, but he didn't break it. He knew there'd be a glass detector, so instead he removed the entire frame and crawled his way in. The first thing they saw was a man sitting in this white car suffering from a gunshot wound to his shoulder. As the sun rises on day 16 of the car fire, the battle against the flames rages on. But for some, the cleanup effort is just beginning. This home may look completely flattened after the car fire tore through here, but in reality, there's still about six inches of ash and rubble sitting above the foundation. And today, volunteers are helping the homeowners sift through it all. I'm a cook, so I have all this measuring spoons and cups. So I found a couple of <laughs> burnt ones. Gloria Shaw is standing in what's left of the kitchen she used to cook dinner in every night. The kitchen and then the living room and then you go down the hall and then there was a laundry room as you can tell by the washer and dryer. Just days after the car fire destroyed the home she spent her entire life in. Just looking for stuff that survived and not much. Gloria and her husband are sifting through the rubble for the first time, trying to salvage anything that survived the flames. Probably just some jewelry that my mom, my mom's, or or mine, or because I don't, I lost my wedding ring too. So, but they're not rummaging through the ash on their own. Here, there, yep. People from across the nation are searching alongside them, volunteering through an organization called Samaritan's Purse. We just cordon out an area with the flags and we send people in with sifters and the wheelbarrows and they just they just start having at it. The disaster relief group is based out of North Carolina, but many of the volunteers live right here in Redding. You see it in pictures, but it doesn't compare to seeing it in person. So any little thing that I can pick up, move, help others to help them. That's what I'm going to do. And one of those local volunteers says as devastating as the car fire has been, it's also brought the Reading community closer. I think it's pulled us together in so many ways. Just being here, I think, helps them. Not just helping these homeowners find some of their belongings, but also find some closure too. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we are going to miss and wish we still had, but it's okay. We're all alive. We're all well. We'll be okay. In Reading, Olivia De Janeiro, Fox 40 News. Where were you? 
how did you find out? Those are the questions many of us ask when we talk about 9-11. And Cal Expo officials are making sure all Californians have a peaceful place to come to spark those conversations and to remember the 2,977 people who lost their lives on this day. But not all stores inside the mall are reopening. Only about 25 are opening their doors. Others, like American Eagle and Claire's, are waiting for the green light from their corporate headquarters to be able to reopen. For years, this building and others like it have sat empty, but now Cal Fire is restaffing these lookouts so they'll have more eyes on the horizon when fires do pop up. We're getting a report of breaking news that ghosts have overrun the city of Sacramento. Who are we going to call? Ghostbusters. When there's something strange in his neighborhood. This little guy ain't afraid of no ghosts. He'll just come out of the whatever room he's in. I got a call and then put on his proton pack and go fight ghosts around the house or at the park. London Green saw the cult classic film when he was just three years old and he's been obsessed with it ever since. Once the song came on, it was just like he was hooked and. But the five-year-old's bravery goes much farther than hunting ghosts. He was born without a pulmonary artery. His um, valves were twisted and he had a hole in the bottom. London has already undergone four heart surgeries and weeks of hospital stays for a congenital heart defect. So when the Make-A-Wish Foundation found out about his dream to be a ghostbuster, they recruited some experts right here in Sacramento to make it happen. We're Sacramento Ghostbusters. Now aim it at the ghost. With his proton pack strapped on and his ghost meter in hand, London joined the Sacramento Ghostbusters to hunt some haunted spirits in old Sacramento. I got to be a Ghostbuster. He followed trails of slime around the city to track down ghosts in the railroad museum start bringing them down. and zap a ghost inside the old Eagle Theater. <laughs> But it was a trail of marshmallows that led him to his final mission. Catching the stable of Marshmallow Man. You did it! You did it, buddy! And like any true hero, the mayor was there at the end of his journey to award him the highest honor in Sacramento. It's the key to the city. A community-wide effort to make a brave little boy's wish come true. In Old Sacramento, Olivia De Janeiro, Fox 40 News. I'm standing six or seven stores away from Build-A-Bear right now, and if you think this line looks long, there are still hundreds of people behind me, the line wrapping all the way around the mall. The main challenge for any handler during the ring is getting their dog to focus on them. So they use hand signals like this, stand, stand, and treats as motivators. I might need a little more practice before I can hang with the pros. And what do you do if you feel like you're going to fall? This. <laughs> and there you have it.